With eurozone inflation at 0.5%, many experts are highlighting a severe risk of deflation. The European Central Bank has signaled it is prepared to take action, but there's still some skepticism as to how big the threat and how real the threat actually is. What does your study show? Our publication shows that uh, deflation is a, a significant risk for the Eurozone. There are already five countries out of 18 that are in outright deflation. And if you look at the Eurozone as a whole, as you said, um, inflation is only at 0.5% and we can see a downward trend in inflation since the end of uh, 2011. And um, it's far below uh, the target of the ECB, which is below but close to 2% in the medium term. Um, we think that deflation can be risky, but we also think that low inflation uh, can be harmful, especially in the current situation of the Eurozone, uh, for two main reasons. The first one is uh, for date, uh, debt sustainability. Uh, because uh, deflation and low inflation increases uh, real rates uh, and increases the real value uh, of, of the debt. So deflation can also be harmful uh, because of the relative price adjustment that is taking place at the moment in the Eurozone. Uh, southern countries are trying to regain competitiveness vis-à-vis uh, -vis the northern countries of Europe. And uh, the fact that there is low inflation in uh, the core country could make uh, this adjustment more difficult. So Guntram, considering interest rates are at a historic 0.25% low, what can the ECB actually do further? Well, the European Central Bank has a very difficult task, namely it has to bring up inflation rates in the entire Eurozone, in the periphery, as well as in the core of the Eurozone. If it only increased the inflation rates in the periphery, it would actually undermine the relative price adjustment between the north and the south in the eurozone. So in other words, we need to find a monetary policy instrument that is actually increasing inflation, not just in the south, but also in the core of the euro area. In addition, the European Central Bank has the difficult problem that there are significant problems in the banking system. In particular, the bank lending channel, bank lending doesn't work. And so a monetary imp impulse given to the banking system often does not reach corporations and households. Uh, thirdly, there's of course also treaty constraints as regards what the ECB is allowed or not allowed to do. Now given these constraints, we discuss the pros and cons of different monetary policy options in our paper. One option is the negative deposit rate, so deposits at the European Central Bank would actually be penalized by banks, so incentivizing banks to actually use the money otherwise. A second option would be to buy corporate bonds or even asset-backed securities in the markets. A third option is to buy sovereign bonds um, from different countries in the Eurozone. Now all the three options have pros and cons and have different effects on how they trickle down, how they create inflation, but also in terms of, of course, what are the implied risks, what are the implied negative, potential negative and positive consequences for the European Central Bank. Gregory Guntram has just outlined several instruments the European Central Bank could use. What are your thoughts? So the so ECB should um, uh, purchase assets. Buying government bonds uh, could be complicated in the Eurozone because there are 18 uh, different governments and um, there could be some political complication in terms of treaty. Uh, so we think that the ECB should buy uh, private sector assets, such as corporate bonds and uh, asset-backed securities, which are assets backed by a pool of loans. We think that this measure would uh, help improving conditions in terms of lending for corporations and, um, and households in the Eurozone. Uh, this should help revive credit and increase economic activity. And um, this should bring back inflation to the 2% uh, target in the medium term. One potential problem is that um, in Europe, uh, firms depend much more on banks than on capital markets for their financing. And, um, and so the securitization market in the Eurozone is much smaller than, for example, in the UK or in the US. Uh, but we think that uh, the e if the ECB was going to, to buy some asset-backed securities, uh, this, this would help uh, revive this market and this would uh, help uh, develop this market.
Guntram, quantitative easing has been implemented both by the Fed in the United States and the Bank of England in the UK, but it's still very controversial in Europe. What makes the ECB so different? Well, I think the reality is that uh, Europe is not a single country. Europe is a monetary union with many different countries that are all shareholders of a common central bank. So the fear is always that monetary policy action will have consequences for taxpayers in some countries and not for in, in other countries. So the real fear that many have is that monetary policy, so the European Central Bank, would be misused to do things that typically only a fiscal, uh, fiscal uh, authority could do. And the reality is we just don't have a Eurozone treasury at the moment, even though we should probably have something like this eventually.